the significance of coral reefs is, is really tremendous on a global scale. There is no other habitat in the world, perhaps other than tropical rainforests, that have more animals and organisms per individual area than coral reefs. My name is Peter Edmonds. I'm a professor at California State University in Northridge, California. Well, we're on the north coast of Morea, right next door to Cook's Bay, and this is an island in the South Pacific Ocean. It's a, a tropical location. It's very pristine relative to a large number of locations, and it provides a, a perfect spot to study the long-term dynamics of coral reefs, where the impacts from human events are relatively small, although they're not completely absent. A, a large part of my responsibilities here in the, the Marea LTR project is understanding how the corals and the coral communities themselves are changing. And I'm sure many folks have the sentiment that their parents talk about how the hills were greener, the trees were taller when they were children. And that sentiment is exactly what we are trying to get at, but not to have it as a, a general conversation of, I remember how it was many years ago, but we're trying to collect the information that shows clearly what the reefs look like in 2005 and 2006, and of course in 2030 we want to look back and see exactly what those reefs look like. Now to get to that point, a large portion of my daily work here is going out on the reef in small boats with a team of graduate students, maybe four or five people, and we have six sites set up around the island of Morea, and in every one of these sites we have areas that are marked with stainless steel poles and hopefully will last 30 years as well. And each one of those areas becomes a photograph in our record. We travel with a, a high resolution digital camera such as a, a serious professional might buy at a, a store on the high street. We have that camera attached to a, a framer that we made in our, our own workshop and that framer supports the camera above the reef so we can take exactly the same picture year after year after year. We typically go out to our, our study sites. We work at both about 60 feet and at 30 feet. And at every one of these sites, we're taking 40 or 50 photographs that have high resolution that allow us in our laboratory back in California to measure exactly how much of that reef floor was covered by coral when we took that picture. The other half of what I am trying to do here is experiments on the shore where we've, we've built ourselves this, this aquarium facility that allows us to control the temperature of seawater. And we'll be growing corals at different temperatures to try to understand how winter cold temperatures, how summer hot temperatures affect the success of individual species of coral. We're also doing experiments where we are pumping carbon dioxide into some of our tanks. Now carbon dioxide is one of the gases driving global climate change effects, it's increasing in the atmosphere, and one of the critical questions scientists would like to answer is how will corals be able to grow at a time when carbon dioxide levels are much higher. What we're trying to do is demonstrate clearly a cause and effect relationship that this temperature genuinely causes a coral to die because that will provide the, the true indication of how the reefs are responding and why they're changing over time. We want to know when we look back and we're old scientists were the corals more abundant 30 years ago? Were they taller? Were there more species? Without that information, it's impossible to know how things like climate change, how things like urban development truly are affecting our reef, and it's impossible to have any degree of certainty as to what that reef might look like for our children to swim over.